What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up a private dedicated server in V Rising. The game's come out in a full 1.0 release, and with it, pretty much everything's been wiped, everyone will be starting anew, and there's a ton of new players coming into the game. That's exactly what this guide is for. I made one previously that went into a lot of detail. This one's going to be a little bit quicker, but the process may have changed a little bit, so here's a refresher with the latest version. Obviously, you can host the game in V Rising without having to have a dedicated server. So, for example, play followed by private game, you should be able to set up your own server, so advanced settings, and you can open it up to LAN play here. If you're going to be playing online with friends, you'll probably want to host a dedicated server, then click host on the left hand side, and it'll take you to an instructions page like this, which was last updated nine hours ago. This is essentially what I'll be running through here. If you'd like to use an older version of V Rising, you can find them here, but we'll be doing the 1.0 release, which is the latest version here. This process may look very confusing, but it's actually rather simple. Of course, you can also just play on any online server with your friends, PvE, PvP, etc. But if you're like me, you probably want your own little server to play with your friends, and you probably don't want to pay money to host one from a hosting provider, especially if there's none in your country. So, how exactly do we set up a dedicated server? Well, we'll start by quitting the actual game itself and heading across to theme. You want to search your game library for V Rising, and you should find V Rising dedicated server. Just make sure that you own the game on this account, and V Rising dedicated server should show up. All you need to do is download and install this. You can install it to any drive. And when you have, you're ready to go ahead and host your own server completely for free, as long as you keep your system running, that is. You can install this on a different computer, so you can take some load off of your current system, but it shouldn't really matter if you've got a powerful CPU and enough RAM. Let's get into that. In order to set up your own dedicated server, once you've installed it, right click it and choose manage followed by browse local files. Then inside of here, you'll see all of the server files, etc. But the one that we're interested in is the start server example dot bat file here. We'll copy this and paste it in the same folder and we'll call it start server, for example. This way we know which one we're editing. Right click this, then choose edit and it should open up with a program like Notepad. You can use Notepad++, just plain old Notepad, it doesn't really matter. Once you've done this, we'll look at this very last line over here. First of all, we can change the saving path for data. If for some reason you're running multiple servers, you'll need to change this here. But for now, dot slash means current directory and save data is a folder that will be created in here in just a moment when we run our server. Then server name, whatever's inside of the quotes here is what your server is called. I'll call it troubleshoots server as such, and I'll leave it like that. Save name is if you want to have different worlds so you can change between them. And finally, log file, I'll leave as is, and we'll go ahead and save this. When we run this, it'll generate a bunch of files for our server, as you can see here, and it creates new folders, save data, config, etc. We'll wait for our server to start up completely by just leaving this open for a few seconds, and eventually we can close it. That's it. Now, the rest is just configuration and eventually allowing the game through your local network so other people can connect to you over the internet. There is an alternate way of downloading this, which is detailed in the official setup instructions, which is using Steam CMD, but I won't go through that here as we've already got the server installed. That option is just if you want to run it on a virtual private server or something like that, but you don't necessarily have a display like I do here and you're stuck with just a command line for example. Let's go ahead and customize our server. In your server install folder you'll find a vRising server underscore data folder. This is where all of the saves, options and things like that for your server are. In here we'll navigate into streaming assets followed by settings and we have our two main configuration files for our server here. Once again you can open them with any text editor. I'll be using sublime text. So having a look at this, we can change the name for our server. I'm pretty sure this is overridden by the one that we've just set in our start server.bat file. But for good luck, I'll set it as troubleshoots server here as well. We can change the port and query port if for some reason port forwarding is an issue and need to set a specific port, but we'll get to this later on. You can change the server max FPS, which isn't the max FPS for everyone. This is just the tick rate for your server. Change the world name, set a password in here, which may be important for you. Actually, it's probably good to set a password. I'll make mine very simple. Yours shouldn't be this simple. We can choose to list it on the Steam server browser, in-game, etc. I think I'll be setting both of these to true if you want friends to find it the easy way. And of course, especially if you want to open it up to the public. Then below this, you can choose a difficulty preset, change API, and at the very bottom, Archon, which is remote admin or remote console, which allows you to run commands through a specific port using a specific program, but I won't go through that here. This option is here if you're so interested in it. For now, we've set everything up as we need it in order to start playing with our friends. The other options file here 
Server game settings allows us to customize pretty much everything when it comes to the game, such as resource multipliers, time, etc. Everything that you could ever dream of is here, and you can customize it to your heart's content. You can even change it from PvP to PvE as such. I'll leave it as PvP. At this point, we're able to run the server file and join our own server. So I'll head all the way back to our folder here, and I'll double click on Start Server, which is the one that we customized. When we do so, this window opens up. It'll use roughly 3 gigs of RAM and quite a bit of CPU. Although the CPU should calm down once your server started up. And at this point, you should be able to join your own dedicated server. So if I fire up the normal game, where we can head to play, followed by online play, PvE or PvP, or even show all servers in the bottom right. And assuming your server's been running for a short while, it should probably be listed here. As you can see, I have troubleshoot server popping up here, zero out of 40, and it is password protected. And click on it, and we can join the game. We'll enter the password here, and after connecting and customizing our character, you'll see that we're starting the game off as usual. And of course, if there was someone else here with us, they'd be running around too. This is great and all, but at this current point, most likely only you are able to play on your server, not any of your your friends or even someone sitting right next to you. In order to change that, we'll need to quit out of the game, yes, and head back to our server host settings configuration file as such. We'll need to pay special attention to port and query port. If you haven't changed these at all, then congratulations, it's going to be a bit more simple for you. But of course, if you have changed these, just remember to change them in any commands that I tell you to run in the future. I haven't written this just yet, but in the description down below, you'll find a link to my vRising server guide in text form. All you need to do is head across them and look for this section over here, net firewall rule, followed by a bunch of different commands. This one is for enshrouded, and as I haven't written the guide yet, essentially what you'll do is copy these using the copy button or selecting them in Control C or right click copy, and we'll be pasting these into PowerShell so we can allow all of the ports required to play the game automatically without having to do it manually in Windows Firewall. You can, of course, do it manually if you don't trust these commands, but they'll save you quite a bit of time. It'll look something more like this. What we'll need to do is hit start and then type in PowerShell, right click this and choose run as administrator. Then inside of the new PowerShell window, we'll go ahead and paste in these commands using Control V or right click and we'll paste anyway, then hit enter a few times to make sure everything's run properly. At this point, we've allowed vRising through our firewall and and someone sitting next to us connected to the same router as us or switch should be able to play the game with us by simply joining our server, either using our IP directly or by using the server list. But people over the internet will still be unable to join you. We'll need to do one more step in order to allow people outside of our local network to join our server, and that is port forwarding. For a lot of people, this is super scary, but it's actually relatively simple as long as you have access to your router and have its password. As there are so many different kinds of routers, yet again, I'll be showing you my troubleshoot basic router that should give you a simple example of what we're going to be doing. Essentially, you'll be looking for the port forwarding section or application forwarding or something like that in your router, where you can enter internal and external ports, choose a protocol and enter an IP address. In order to find out your computer's local IP address, hold start and press R, so the flag key and R, and in here type in CMD, then hit enter. In this new window, type in IP config and hit enter. This will show you all the information for all of your different network connections. What we're looking for is the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's Ethernet. As you can see, it says IPv4 address, which is our local address, is 192.168.1.50. Our router over here is asking us to enter just the last set of digits, but for you, it may be the whole thing. In my case, I'll be entering 50 here. Then for the ports, we'll need to enter these two ports over here, which we can easily do by entering them in separately. Or for example, if we can enter a range, we can do them both in one room. In my case, I can enter a range, so I'll use 9876 to 9877 to include both of these in one go. So we'll put the same for internal and external. Then protocol should be TCP and UDP. Then just click add new or add or something like that. Once you've done this, people should technically be able to join your server, but there's a few more ports that we should open just so it shows up properly in the list and Steam's list. For this, you should also enter the ports 27015 and 27016. Once again, if you can enter a range, do both of these as such. Otherwise, you'll need to add both of these manually. Once again, I'll copy and paste to both of these TCP and UDP and type in the correct local IP. Once we add it, bam, now everything should be working properly. Assuming you want to remotely access your server and run commands, you can enable Archon, but just remember to port forward this one as well. I'll be leaving this off just so our server is more secure. 
At this point, people over the internet should be able to join your server as long as it's running on your system. So that means that running your own dedicated server on your own computer is completely free. As long as you keep your PC turned on and the server running, anyone will be able to join it, or of course, only your friends if you set a password. With that, congratulations, you now know how to set up your own server. Just keep in mind you won't be using the launch button over here. Instead, you'll need to right-click, manage, and browse local files where we can run our start server.bat here. If you'd like to simplify it, right-click it and choose Create Shortcut, though for me it's under More Options, Create Shortcut, and we can move this to our desktop. Then I can call it something like The Rising Server. Every time we run the shortcut, our dedicated server will start up, and there you go, our friends, including us, should be able to join and make some progress. That's it. If you'd like any more details on customizing your server, once again, you'll find the official dedicated server guide linked down below that goes into incredible detail. This guide mainly goes through different configuration options for your server, tells you about the default settings and things like that, and it's a good read, especially if you're going to be hosting your own server publicly on Steam. There's many things that you may want to add or change in your options, etc. At the very bottom, it does talk about taking backups, and that is a good idea, especially if you're going to be hosting a server for multiple people, and it tells you how to transfer a local save to a dedicated server. I think I did a guide on this previously, but as you can see, all we need to do is copy it from App Data, Local Low, Stunlock Studios, VRising, Cloud Saves, followed by our Steam ID, and move it across to our servers folder, followed by saves. So for example, our actual dedicated server will open up the folder once more, go to Save Data, Saves, V3, World 1, and we can place all of the files in here. Navigating across to this location here, I'll copy it, hold Start, and press R, so flag key and R, in order to bring up the Run dialog, and I'll paste it in here. Notice that I didn't copy Steam ID at the very end. We'll click OK, and this folder will open up in a file browser. We'll have our specific ID over here, and assuming you've played your own game on your own private instance, V3, you'll see a world name here, as well as a bunch of different files inside of it. You should probably copy this entire folder and paste it into your server, save data, saves v3 in here. Then simply copy this folder's name as such and edit your start server.bat to point to this one instead of world one. So save name, paste it in here inside of the quotes, save it and close it. Then once more in vRising server data, streaming assets, settings, server host settings, we'll be replacing world one here as well. I think changing it in the bat overrides the settings here, but just in case I've set it in both locations. Now, when we run our server using our start server.bat file, and we go ahead and join our server. So play online, show all, my own server here, join game, password. You'll see that I'm back where I left off in my single player world with all of my buildings, all of my items, etc. Here, that's it. This is running on my dedicated server and someone joining me can run out to the same location and join me as if we were playing on our own single player server. Anyways, that's really about it. We've run through everything you need to know, including customizing your server, migrating your local save to a server save file. At the very end, you can learn about Archon. There's a couple of different programs that let you do this. And we've actually run to the end of this file. We've covered everything you need to know, except for going into details about all of these individual commands. And now you know how to run your own server pretty comfortably on your own system. So enjoy your brand new vRising free dedicated server, obviously as long as you're running it. And I wish you the best of luck in setting it up if you haven't already following along with this video. Thank you all for watching. Remember, in the description down below, you'll find a text version of this and, of course, all the commands you need to copy and paste. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.